What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to go over the recession probabilities for 2024. Now I know nobody wants to hear the word recession, but trust me, recessions are usually the time when big money is made because you get a lot of opportunities and a lot of deals um, in the market. So I want to break down certain reports and different correlations being drawn between the S&P 500, the recession probabilities, the payroll numbers, the jobless claims, all those different things. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. And of course, getting access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, members only private videos. Everything is going to be included with the link down below. There is a 16% annual discount that is available for the next five days. And after, after that, it does expire. So links are going to be down below. So this right here was uh, what Carl tweeted just a few days ago from Ed Yardini. They basically mentioned that with the oil prices spiking again, we can't help but think of the 1970s. And we are concerned enough about the oil price spike, the ballooning federal deficit to return our subjective odds of a recession before the year end 2024 to 25%. So we know that the recession uh, narrative has been driving the markets for quite some time. There's been a lot of expectations for recession in 22, recession in 23, and now that's getting pushed out to 2024. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I think the first couple of years, 2022 and 2023, the recession indicators were nowhere near close to an actual economic recession. Yes, we did get a technical recession. You know, we did see the GDP contract two quarters in a row. Earnings declined two quarters in a row, but nothing really materialized into a real economic recession. There's a huge difference, very, very significant difference between a technical recession and an actual economic recession. And what we did witness was a technical recession, only a couple quarters of GDP declining. That's it. Nothing else, right? And the most important market, as I've already mentioned, is the labor market. Unemployment, you you track, you 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 figure out unemployment. You predict where unemployment is going to be. You tell me where unemployment is going to be a year from now. That is all I need to know when it comes to the economic landscape to understand where the markets will be, where rates will be, and where the economy will be. You tell me where unemployment will be a year from now. It solves 90% of our problems because that is the starting point. That is literally the starting point for all spending, all saving, all investing, all productivity, all growth, all everything, right? Interest rates, inflation, everything is going to be dictated by how many people are employed. So labor market drives everything. Now, if you come over to uh, the probability of U.S. recession predicted by treasury spreads, uh, 12 month ahead months averages, it's over 60% by August 2024. So, you know, definitely there is pretty significant weight uh, going into 2024 that there is going to be a recession. The probabilities are increasing every single week. And the reason for that is because of the lag effects of interest rates that are now starting to come into play. I think that's what most people are going to be talking about when they mention recession in 24, the lag effects, the time lag of interest rates going higher because in 2022 rates were low. In 2023, most of 2023 rates were on the way up, but they weren't high enough. And now we've got to a point where, yes, the Federal Reserve's already raised them by over 500 points, and we got to a level where, okay, rates are higher for longer. How is that going to now affect the economy moving forward, right? Fourth quarter 23 and first quarter 24 is that six-month window where most people are expecting the economy to take the brunt of that pain and, of course, the lag effects to start rolling in and start affecting the economy, the consumer spending, um, and, the, and of course, overall inflation as well. So this right here is a report from Stifle that pretty, pretty much mentioned that only by fourth quarter 23 do we see payrolls at pre-recession levels. So again, starting in fourth quarter 23, um, under the 20-year pre-COVID median, and that may prompt Fed cuts. Now, as I mentioned, recession or deflation are the two reasons why the Federal Reserve cuts rates. Um, and they are expecting that, that that may prompt the Federal Reserve to cut rates if we start to see payrolls decline payrolls. Once again, the labor market, the jobs report starts to continue to roll over and starts coming down. Now, this right here is my drawing. So please forgive this. Uh, it's not the best of drawing, but I wanted to kind of highlight exactly where we are. Uh, so the black line is interest rates. The red line is the market. The green line is the unemployment rate. So what we really witnessed in the last you know couple of years is interest rates going up. The market basically went down. The red line basically went down while interest rates were going up because the markets are forward looking, right? Markets want to understand what is going to happen 6, 12, 18 months from now, not what's already happened or what's already been announced. They are forward looking. The you know, market has its own mind. 
And that mind is trying to, once again, foresee what is going to happen. And that's why the markets basically dropped while interest rates were, were on the way up. And of course, since uh, we got, you know, some sort of uh, scenarios that, okay, you know, Federal Reserve is going to start pausing a little bit. Inflation is rotating back down very, very nicely. So that's going to prompt some pause in the Federal Reserve. It's going to prompt that pivot. Market obviously had performed really well, started pushing back higher in 2023. And this right here is the unemployment rate, which obviously after the huge cut, we got, of course, during the pandemic, we got a huge spike and then the cut uh, unemployment rate stabilized back down. And we have been at really, really low levels for a very long time. Now, since interest rates are now higher for longer, they are at a level where we where we haven't been for quite some time. In fact, the last time we were at these levels was back in 06, 07. Um, now is going to be the time when it starts to affect the economy. And I think with other reports suggesting the excess savings are depleting, credit card spending is at an all-time high. Most people are, you know, focusing on spending a lot less moving forward. There were a couple surveys that we already pointed to in my previous videos. Spending starts to pull back. That's going to lead to lower demand, which leads to lower revenues and earnings, which leads to cutting costs for companies, which leads to potential layoffs, which leads to increasing in unemployed persons, which leads to higher unemployment. So that's the chain of thought that I want you guys to keep the, keep in the back of your head. Not that it's going to actually play out and happen exactly word for word. If it does, that's going to be crazy, but it's something to keep in mind. That is the chain of thought that does follow during recessionary environments. And going over to this right here, human behavior doesn't change. Employment governs bear markets. And this is word for word, exactly what we have talked about. And the most important indicator in this example they're using is the jobless claims, right? Jobless claims filed, which is the unemployment benefits uh, or the insurance filed uh, and how that relates to the S&P 500, because it's a leading indicator, right? If we are seeing week on week basis, more and more people file for unemployment benefits. Well, guess what? They're getting laid off, right? They're filing for jobless claims, insurance benefits. Uh, and as a result, it's going to reflect in the unemployment report, which is going to reflect in productivity, which is going to reflect in the earnings, which is going to reflect in the market's expectation of the future. And every single time you go back, you go back to 1990s, S&P 500 and inverted, uh, the claims that are on an inverted basis have both moved in the same direction. 1981, 1973, 1969, 2000, 2007, every single occasion we've had the S&P 500 and the unemployment benefits, the claims both move in the same direction. Again, this is inverted, right? So as claims have gone up, S&P 500 has come down because that's telling us that, okay, claims are going up. That's going to lead to more unemployment. That's going to lead to a recession, which obviously is not great news for the market. However, there is a window though, right? Recessions are not great for the market in a very short period of time. Over long periods of time, they represent huge buying opportunities because guess what? The Federal Reserve combats that recession by lowering interest rates. And of course, inflation comes down during recessions because people are not spending as much money. Demands are going to go away and prices roll over. So, this is all in an effort to help you prepare for what could be one of the not I don't want to say like the most likely outcome, but could be one of a high probability outcome over the next six to 12 months as we are, let's say, going to September of 2024. Right. And we look back and we kind of, OK, so we went through a recession. We had the buying opportunities and the markets are now higher. I want you guys to be prepared for that so you don't miss out on the possibility that, OK, even if the economy does enter a recession, that's not bad news. Yes, it's terrible for the economy and, you know, people would end up losing jobs. But from a market perspective, we have to be understanding of the fact that, OK, recessions lead to lower inflation and they also lead to Fed cuts, which both of them are very bullish catalyst for the market. So that's something to keep in mind. I honestly do believe there is. And I don't want to make a prediction here in this video, but I do believe with everything that we have learned with respect to the consumer spending kind of shifting and a lot of the consumers not really spending as much anymore. They're starting to pull back from all the surveys that we have learned. Um, and, and of course, credit card debt at an all time high, you know, excess savings starting to deplete. It is possible uh, that we start to see some pullback in spending, which leads to some increase in claims and unemployment rates as well over the next few quarters, which could lead to. Uh, the economy and, and of course the slowdown in the economy, the productivity starting to come down um, that we will create some opportunities for us to all cost average into. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I, I don't want to put a percentage on that recession probability, but 
in my view, and, and from all the indicators that are out there, and of course, the lag effects with interest rates being higher for longer now, um, there are certain things that do suggest that, okay, there is a possibility for weakness in the economy. There is a possibility for higher claims and higher levels of unemployment, which will, again, create opportunities for us to buy into the market if it actually ends up selling off, let's say, 10, 20 percent from these levels. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, let me know in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and what are you thinking in terms of these sort of indicators? And of course, are you expecting a recession or not? Link's going to be down below for our uh, Patreon and our money investing community for Discord. 16% uh, annual discount that's available till the end of this month. As always, happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video and the link's going to be down below.